Welcome everyone to our first AMA with Orpiva AI, a major use case in Concordium ecosystem. My name is Milan. I'll be your host today as always. Before we dive in to the conversation, let's start by a short intro to Concordium. Concordium is a public blockchain that's all about balancing privacy and accountability. It's backed by science and has a unique feature, a protocol level ID for every wallet. This makes transactions safe and unlocks multi-trillion dollar economy, thus appealing to bankers, regulators, and DeFi enthusiasts alike. Uh, the native coin CCD has various uses like fixed transaction fees, staking, node operator rewards, and DeFi collateral. Learn more about Concordium by navigating to concordium.com where you can find all the relevant information as well as links to our community channels. Now let's meet our special guest. We have uh, Dr. Salman Valibek, uh, the CEO and co-founder of Orpiva AI. He's here to talk about the most recent developments, our partnership and exciting next steps for the project moving ahead. So welcome Salman to the show. Uh, how are you doing today? Uh, th- not not bad today. Thanks for the invite. Very excited to sort of uh, join here and um, share my insight and also like participate with this fantastic crowd. Yeah, it's been it's been uh, some time like since uh, Concordium and Orpiva like announced the partnership. I think it, it it was like almost a year ago, actually more a bit more than a year ago in September two thousand twenty-three. Uh, so it's been a while. But uh, you guys been building, you guys been like uh, doing a lot of stuff. So maybe for those who are completely new for Concordium community, would you give us a brief introduction uh, to what Orpiva AI is and what motivated you to co-found the platform? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so thank you very much for having me. And uh, in terms of Orpiva, what we do is... Uh, we help brands to sort of create high performing marketing content and penetrate in the social commerce space, um, leveraging influencer and AI. And uh, obviously we, we are working with major sort of brands such as Nike, Samsung, Vodafone, BT, and you name it. So we are working with them and helping to them to penetrate into this market. The, the, the reason sort of, you know, this market is quite uh, lucrative and attractive. If you look at like uh, the social commerce itself, it's currently standing at $1 trillion. And by 2030, it's going to become $6.2 trillion. So there is a six-fold increase in the social. And if you look at the reason, for instance, if you look at like TikTok uh, or Douyin in China, uh, they got 1.2 billion daily active users on, and uh, the average session per user is 95 minutes. And that's why the attention economy is very pivotal for the brands to tap into and then leverage the social commerce. And we are helping them to sort of, you know, facilitate that by, um, by creating this connection between influencer and the brand and facilitating those conversations between them. That's uh, that's a huge market, definitely that you you guys are addressing, and 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 it's it's definitely going to grow more. Um, maybe like a community would like to know uh, what uh, led you to like co-founding this. So in terms of like your background, your interests, uh, and maybe educational background, like career. Yeah. So I did actually, I did completely different fields. So I did a PhD in um, AI and machine learning, but for medical robotics. So uh, it was actually for the the surgical robotics. We were sort of doing the autonomous robotic navigation inside the body and um, using the AR and VR sort of, you know, um, technology to augment the organ which needs to be operated. And then we were doing that transatlantically. So think of surgeon, you know, manipulating some surgical shaft in front of, um, you know, uh, uh, display, and then the surgery is happening by the robots, and then robot is, you know, navigating inside the body, you know, autonomously, similar to Tesla self-driving car, but inside, which is much more challenging in terms of, like, navigating without creating the rapture, and then trying to sort of, you know, augment the organ which needs to be operated to assist the surgeon. So that's what uh, kind of I did, and I went back to, I went to Japan, actually, to teach robotics and AI, 
uh, teaching the robots how to mimic structure, human movement, just by looking at it like dance is a martial art. Came back to London and uh, started my own um, AI and uh, AI consultancy and you know the application development company and advised many corporates, banks, and many other sort of things. Hired over sort of 800 engineers and then uh, basically built a lot of tools, a lot of, and um, basically helped a lot of enterprise clients to monetize their data and then. I started Orpiva as initially as a commerce platform. And funny enough, we built that for a number of years. And then we realized that actually the missing piece is the, the, uh, the marketing piece, where it's uh, quite sort of tricky to market a product. Even you have a best product, but the marketing is kind of, you know, very tricky. So it was at the time where, you know, social media was booming. So we stumbled over sort of influencers. And we realized there is a sort of, you know, these days and this age and date, you know, you need to actually have social first experience commerce rather than like just having a commerce. So just having a good commerce platform is not enough. And you need to have social first, you know, influence the led strategy to succeed in this sort of, you know, noisy environment. So that's kind of how the Orpiva was born as a business, you know, today. And uh, we've been sort of evolving uh, the, and solving some of the problems within the industry. So I'm happy to elaborate a lot of some of the problems, but uh, in a very nutshell, if you look at the business itself, there it's got like two sort of, you know, main pillar. One is the content piece where you make a relevant content, which is sort of, you know, for the, your audience. And then distribution of the content, which is happening on the influencer page or on the ads platforms such as TikTok, you know, Meta, WhatsApp, you know, YouTube and other things. So we are sort of, you know, trying to solve that problem using the AI and blockchain and making sure like we are innovating on the sort of, you know, latest um, innovation to solve some of the key problems in, 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 uh, in this industry. Um... Thank you. Like, uh, that's, that's, that's a very interesting path into like social commerce. Like I, I gotta say, like, but at the same time, very, very exciting. And, and I can, I can imagine it, it helps to have like that deep understanding of AI in, in the background. So you described a little bit there already, like that you guys have done some pivots and stuff, but, uh, if we, uh, if we would focus on today's or PYI, what is the core mission and how are you differentiating yourself from other AI driven social commerce platforms? No, absolutely. So we create product experience to reinvent the storytelling and unlocking the new customer journey, effectively giving the brands, you know, an unfair advantage in the attention economy. So that's kind of what we are doing. And uh, how we differentiating ourselves is uh, we are actually, we believe the time and age, with the age, with the gener generative AI, uh, the time has passed that you actually hire an agency to do your marketing needs. Uh, we believe, you, you know, you need just sit on the computer, just having your product without any knowledge, leveraging the AI to make your content and distribute it across multiple platforms. So that's kind of, you know, the piece which we are sort of building with Concordium as well, the marketplace. Uh, where the influences and the generative AI piece, you know, coming together, uh, where we can create the content instantaneously. And uh, that's the platform we built. And um, you might ask where the blockchain is coming. Um, one of the key issues in the industry is the influences content has been sort of, you know, copied around and used without um, knowledge of the, the influence and creator itself. So we want to use the Concordium to actually like do do the verification if the person who is claiming to own the content is actually the person you know who who, who did it, it is uh, behind the scene, and also manage the licensing aspect, which is the second bit, uh, licensing aspect through the CCD, and you know understand if this content has been used, we can sort of have the smart contract for the brands, you know, saying, okay, this has been used. And then this percentage goes to the creator, this percentage goes to the platform. So we can do very transparent sort of, you know, um, divide of the licensing and uh, there is no haggling. There is no sort of, you know, uh, communication as such, you know, to do back and forth. So it would automize all of these processes and make it lean and bring the cost down. So that's kind of the aim. Uh, so ultimately, we want to build this co-pilot for, um, for marketing. 
So we started with social media sort of marketing, but we want to build that co-pilot where you create the content instantaneously and then you take care of all of the asset rights, you know, management, et cetera. And then also you do the distribution of the ads across multiple platforms and optimize it for the brand. So no more, you know, 125,000 people WPP of the world, but like you can have one person in your marketing department or you as a founder, you can run your entire marketing department using this platform. Mm, mm. That's that's very very impressive. So, in five years, like, uh, what's the ultimate vision? Is that uh, that one person can run the whole thing? Absolutely. So, we want to shape the future of commerce, uh, social and commerce, by facilitating the conversation in uh, in a way that promotes the brand, product, causes, and ideas in a more meaningful, authentic way. And um, I think the current uh, sort of um, current way of dealing we've got so many agencies involved so many people taking cut and you know so many people like you know we want to cut through the noises and inefficiencies within these processes and i think that sort of makes sense um with especially like you know uh, looking at the ai capabilities we don't need such a sort of friction um, you know f- um, such a friction in the uh, creator sort of industry so that's what we are trying to eliminate and as a result of that, you know, it becomes automated, instant, lower cost. And um, it's a win-win for both brands, which uh, they want to tap into sort of, you know, this industry and benefit from it. And also it's a win for the influencers where they get more business on the back of that. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Um, so when we go back to the like concordium partnership you already did mention like the how you're using blockchain but um can you elaborate a bit more like uh, what is like happening under the hood in terms of yeah absolutely uh, very so basically uh in our platform uh, it's a two-sided marketplace where we have uh, influencer content and, and uh, then we've got the brands who's leveraging those content and using the generative ai to customize it so you can actually it's just think of gpt where you do text to text we do text to video or product link to video uh, where you can generate your video based on your product and that video comes from the influencer and also generative AI. So we got two types of content, which is completely generated using, you know, uh, GPT for video generator and also the influencer content, which is the latest trend sort of video of theirs. And then the idea is like any influencer can connect with the Concordium wallet and see what's going on, you know, with uh, with their content, how many times it's been used, how many times it's been utilized. And then, you know, they, we can actually divide and then uh, divide the sort of, you know, licensing fee to them and us as a platform, just uh, minimally to, to take a uh, cut uh, where we basically, you know, distribute it very transparently to the creators. And Concordium has been um, great because I think it's one of the sort of, you know, few solution that does uh, zero knowledge proof identity verification. So without the influencers giving us, you know, their ID, et cetera, we can rest assured like, you know, oh, this content owns to this person without like, you know, going back and forth, checking their sort of, you know, documents, et cetera, uh, which the influencers are quite sort of, you know, um, afraid of actually sharing with us. But I guess, you know, with a concordium since it's done automatically and then you know it's ensuring that their data is not passed to us maybe sort of you know they are okay doing that have you that, that's interesting like what you mentioned there have you uh experienced in in like uh what what sort of kind of blockers there has been in onboarding like when you think about uh those users are they a bit like because they don't understand necessarily like what zero knowledge is and how it works so how do you yeah. communicate that absolutely so we got in our sort of database over 100,000 influences and um, one of the thing is you know when you make two-sided marketplace you need to actually like create the demand first, and then uh, you do the supplies aspect, right? So the demand comes from the brand side where they want to utilize the influencer content. And then we, so far, we actually like, you know, uh, limited that to 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 pool of um, some brands. 
And then we selected a few creators that, you know, we actually had very strong relationship, you know, to test it out and then onboard them and et cetera. So that's kind of, you know, where we are. And then I, I think, you know, there's a big education piece with the influencers, you know, moving forward, you know, but I guess once you create more demand and they can see, you know, they get the benefit of, you know, actually joining the platform, then there is a more word of mouth and how it's done and the more creating more trust. So it's something that you need to do. It's like a flywheel and you need to onboard more customers and then onboarding more customers comes with more influences. And then with their brand reputation going up, I guess, you know, the influences are, you know, they feel more ease to actually like, you know, share their sort of you know information with, with the system. But one of the things, just to give you a perspective of um, how they are scared, actually, like uh, with the uh, with the technologies, sometimes uh, when you actually like email them saying, "Are you interested to participate with this brand?" and you provide a link, they are not willing to actually click on the link itself because they think you know it might be a fraud, and that's kind of you know given that that there is a lot of fraudsters you know out there. And uh, they want to tap into the influence account, taking over their account or do some malicious activity. There are a lot of bad actors and they are getting bombarded with a lot of emails, um, legitimate emails and illegitimate emails. So that's why, you know, uh, it's giving them a little bit of headache in terms of trusting uh, which partners to trust, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a very very valuable insight, I think, and also something that uh, Concordia's product team should should look into, like as a as a use case, possibly for like if you if you could uh, do something around that email verification and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, interesting. Mm. When when we let, let's speak a bit more about like this platform, so. Uh, let me check. So again, uh, when we speak about like Concordia's blockchain technology, how exactly, like, uh, let's say if we talk about transactions on Concordium or like new IDs, uh, as I understand this use case definitely drives more people to create the identity. And, uh, like, maybe possibly wallets as well. But what about, like, actual transactions on Concordium chain? Mm. Yes. So, I guess, you know, the Internet is um, kind of, you know, there is a democracy in the Internet. I guess, you know, if the user or the influencer wants to use the fiat currency, we can actually, like, you know, uh, let them to use it. And also, if they want to use CCD, we, 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 have, we provide, you know, that means also to do it as well, right? So we actually give them the choice, you know, to do which whichever, you know, transaction they want to do. So that's, I, I think, the first point. So when actually, like, you know, the user try, like, you know, the Concordium, they can go to Concordium and collect their fees in CCD. And then if they choose to sort of, you know, go fiat, you know, they go fiat and then they do. Obviously, in the sort of, you know, blockchain, we are, still a little bit at the plumbing stage where we need to onboard, um, you know, the users and, uh, you know, making them understand about the wallet, hash, and, you know, all of these concepts, which is like for some people, it's actually a lot of pain to actually understand it. But uh, I think the reason is because, you know, there's a lot of complexity or, you know, uh, the user interface of Web3 is not very similar to, to some extent to Web2. It's getting better. But uh, I think once we improve and then have this seamless integration in the sort of, you know, the, the front end sort of interface, we're going to see a lot more adaptation of the, the Web3. So we are currently sort of in a uh, transition. I, I would say we are in a transition of Web uh, sort of, you know, 3 to Web, Web2 to Web3. And then the more technology evolves and the more it becomes seamless, we're going to see a lot more adaptation of the Web3 system, including the CCD, including the Bitcoin, including all of the, you know, uh, the, the means and, you know, co co coins after. Okay, makes sense. Definitely, like, uh, I, I believe as, as our platform evolves, we onboard, uh, like, more uh, of different, uh, different ways to get uh, paid. Uh, and uh, we already have Euro E stable coins, so so there could be a lot of use cases for like uh, doing doing stuff on chain as well for those no, influencers and payments. Absolutely. 
uh, one of the other thing is like uh, you know the staking aspect might be also like um, a very interesting proposition for influencers where they can earn by keeping you know their CCD they can earn and stake it and you know and also like you know all, all, there is a value appreciation the more users you know each coin has you know the value goes up and appreciate their sort of you know investment so not only like uh, but you can't do that with fiat obviously with fiat you can get interest in the bank but like you know normally your coin actually depreciate uh, your value of your sort of you know fiat currency dep- depreciate with the sort of you know appreciation in the inflation which is has been the case you know and then we see the phenomenal increase in the gold prices as a result and um, you know maybe bitcoin end of this year would reach 100k as a result of that yes uh, so moving back to orpiva Maybe uh, could you give us like a success story or like one case study on how uh, like Orpiva has benefited like users on both like consumer and, and the seller side? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we actually like uh, so for this platform, uh, we currently sort of you know using enterprise client. It's a closed beta. And then uh, we do sort of, you know, manage service. And then, then we actually managed to get uh, Samsung, you know, repurchasing or reactivating five times over the platform, coming back you know, to generate content using our the platform. And uh, that was a major sort of, you know, success. And on the back of that, we did also like TikTok distribution across the UK. Uh, we had over 20 million people, you know, looking at those content. 200,000 sort of, you know, clicks and we got like very high uh, click through rate of four or five percent. So it means that, you know, people look at it like, you know, four or five percent of them clicked on some of the content. So that sort of, you know, depicts some of the major success from both brand side and also like the influence the content, which is on trend and it worked and it resonated well with their audience. That's that's cool. Samsung uh, and like big enterprises is definitely very, very uh, in, in important to to have there. Um, so if, when we talk money, when we talk business model, like mm. uh, what what sort of business model do you have, and uh, how do you generate revenue? Have you had any revenue so far? Like uh, so, you said uh, you guys are in beta so far. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, we, we actually have, uh, level, revenue. I mean, using the platform, uh, we just signed, uh, last week a million dollar contract. <laughs> so that's, that's, uh, that's just one, one customer. Uh, so we got revenue and uh, whenever we show this to any sort of, you know, customer, they resonate quite well. Uh, not only they can expedite their rollout, they say, okay, I want, I want to roll out like today. We can actually do that within like a few minutes. We can actually have their content ready and also like create their sort of ad account and optimize and, you know, send it across, you know, web and launch the product. So that's kind of the power it gives to the client. No more wait for the influencers to make the content, but it's uh, using the generative AI aspect, you know, we can actually generate the content instantly uh, for the commerce, the social commerce aspect. So that's kind of, you know, uh, the power of this platform and hopefully uh, using this and uh, we want to launch this for um, mostly like SMEs, startups, all of these mom and pop shops across the corner, which they don't have the budget of the enterprise prizes, but um, they have some small amount of cash. They can create the content. So the pricing for the content is um, actually like it's so cheap. It's around 10 pounds or 10, 12 dollars, you know, 13 dollars, you know, as we speak per content. So one content piece is like that. And then uh, they can create as much as they want. And then if they want us to do the advertisement, uh, we also do that as well uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a content which is generated by the platform. So that's kind of the monetization model and how we work with the client. Okay, so you have really clear like kind of pricing in place already in terms of like per content. It's not like you sell packages or stuff like that. No, no, it's very transparent, clear, even on the media buying aspect, we just say, you know, we charge 15% more buy and uh, to to do, and that's include all of the license to the content and also like, you know, our fee to get that managed across, you know, the different platforms. Okay, so, so you uh, mentioned SMEs or small medium enterprises. 
Besides that, like how else are you planning to scale the business of Orpiva? Yeah, so if you look at uh, some of the SaaS companies uh, or you know, in the generative AI space, I guess you see Synthesia is one of them, which actually does the avatar building. And so text to speech to the avatar and then use for company presentation. They got over I think 50,000 or 100,000 sort of you know, customer and they are generating 50 million dollars you know in terms of revenue and i think they recently did their 100 million round at series c for 1 billion valuation so that's what essentially what we are sort of you know going towards and um, building something which actually scales um, because the platform is self-set so you can create your own content and the smes are a good entry point and also there is a lot of them so we want to have, in, instead of like concentration, we still grow the enterprise clients, which there is a lot of concentration uh, at the moment to more SMEs, startups and agencies. So we actually like partner with major agencies across and then we want to create the distribution uh, through that to make sure, you know, we can scale quite rapidly from what we are and get to 100x, you know, in terms of revenue uh, in next two years. So that's kind of the plan moving forward. Amazing. Okay. Uh, when when we talk about like retention of the users, like uh, have you had strategy for building a community and uh, like all all in all, what are, what kind of strategies do you use to like retain the users um, and maybe like based on like feedback that you've received, maybe yeah. you could comment maybe. something around that. Very good question. So there is a community. I think it's, it's two-sided market. So you've got the brand and you've got like the influencers, right? So I think education plays uh, a big role in actually like, you know, uh, keeping the community sort of, you know, vibrant. And uh, what we are sort of planning is giving them some of the insight from the brand perspective, what sort of content and what sort of, you know, things are working from their side. And then giving that education piece so they can make more sort of, you know, content and they can, essentially they can make more money. So that's kind of, you know, the plan, um, which we are sort of, you know, testing with uh, some smaller communities, you know, influencer set. And, um, we are actually like, you know, planning to have influencer advisory board, uh, to sort of, you know, have that community stronger. And that would help us to create engaging content, which actually like, you know, can be leveraged uh, by the brands. And on the brand side, obviously, we, we're going to have a lot of, you know, um, education piece as well on that side and guide them through what works well and what doesn't. And then ultimately their success is our success and the influencer success is our success as well. So trying to get that ball rolling and have community on the both side, you know, to engage well together. Okay, definitely education is a, is a good good approach, and I think like providing insights and and uh, to the business is is valuable. Uh, now let's talk a little bit more about like the roadmap and uh, maybe like where are you guys heading in terms of like uh, maybe you can describe about your like current focus area in terms of geographics, like which countries you've targeted or where do you have most of the business and where are you looking to expand? Where do you have like capabilities and connections to expand? Absolutely. So I guess, you know, um, in terms of capabilities, we're already working with a lot of um, Europe. So we drive the MES strategy for Nike, you know, for instance. And then also we got customer across the U.S., uh, one of the areas that we are looking at, the GCC countries, the Gulf region countries, and then um, there's a lot of, um, you know, momentum there. And uh, it's like uh, we've got a lot of competition in Europe and U.S., but uh, there is not much there. And they are at sort of, you know, infrastructure space. So we are looking at different countries. So I traveled actually like to Qatar and, you know, Saudi uh, a few months back and, you know, made key connections there. And in terms of the future roadmap, so we are adapting different languages, adding different languages to the platform. So if the customer is coming from that sort of regions, we can support, you know, any languages. So that feature is going to be added in coming weeks. So we can actually support any languages with the content. And um, we also do the 
text to speech uh, using the AI voice, uh, which actually, you know, it can support with the languages as well. So that's kind of one of the main feature which give us the edge, you know, and penetrate globally, no matter where you are. That's a, that's a good uh, good insight, I think, for, to all of the community. That uh, and uh, there's obviously like a huge uh, advantage of having having multiple languages there. Um, so, in terms of like focus areas uh, beyond social commerce, have you been considering? Or have you been brain, brainstorming with the team about uh, anything on top of that? Is there any synergies or any like areas that that might benefit from what uh, you guys have built already? No, absolutely. I mean, um, one one of the things we are looking at is you know having our own foundation model, where we make um, uh, you know our own model. Um, on the top of obviously some of the open source and fine tuning some of the models for the social media space. And then ultimately we want to build a co-pilot for marketing, not only for social media, but cross, you know, O2O sort of, you know, online to offline, offline to online and all of that. So we want to make sure this platform would enable, you know, people without sort of having any marketing knowledge whatsoever, whether you are in the crypto, whether you are like, you know, selling, some shoes or, you know, your grocery store across the sort of web, we enable them with this uh, co-pilot technology, which they can become a marketing expert. And uh, without them sort of, you know, accumulating the knowledge, but actually implementing very sophisticated uh, marketing techniques across the web. And internet is like, uh, it's very democratic, right? If you have a good product, and we enable you with a good outreach and people love your product and then there is a product market fit you would sort of you know raise above you know other people but currently if you have a good product not enough budget or right agencies or not like you know go to market strategy then you fail miserably so that's kind of where we want to tap in and uh, to become this co-pilot for marketing ultimately Okay, that's that's cool. Um, I'm thinking like when when we're talking about that, there's uh, like plethora of uh, partnerships you guys need to do in terms of like ad networks and and ad platforms and all kinds of because there is such a big ecosystem in advertisement, right? So, is it something you already have like? connections at or have you been like actively building relationships on that side yeah this is some of the things we've been building uh prior sort of you know and for instance we are enterprise partner with tiktok uh so we got master account we can build you know the ad account for any client on behalf of any client globally uh we actually partner with major affiliate networks like such as affiliate window uh, which they are driving 18 billion in revenue and, you know, Rakuten, one of the other biggest one, um, you know, so if you look at it like partnerize, you know, commission junction, trade doubler, so major affiliate networks, they have a lot of clients on board. Uh, so we built all of these, you know, networks connections and, um, yeah, it's quite exciting, you know, to tapping and now taking the fruit of all of these, uh, you know, partnership with it and all of the bridges we built and now leveraging that in a sort of very cohesively within the platform to make sure everything runs smoothly. Okay, make, makes sense. Uh, what's the roadmap like uh, for the next 12 to 18 months in terms of like platform enhancements? Absolutely. Uh, so where are we now and where are we heading? Yeah, absolutely. So currently, uh, we are at sort of, you know, fundraising stage. So we are trying to close uh, sort of, you know, our series A. And after that, uh, sort of, you know, currently we, in terms of the platform, we are looking to launch it to wider audience. So we're going to open up the gate and the platform. And so not only like serving the enterprise client as a managed service, but like, you know, making the platform as a self-served. Uh, so anybody with any sort of, you know, even smaller budget as like 50 pounds or $50, you know, they can come in and, you know, create their content and download it and test it out for themselves. 
so that's kind of, you know, where we are sort of moving as a general sort of direction. There are a lot of features, as I mentioned, like, you know, languages and uh, sort of other sort of aspects which we are adding uh, features, which we are adding to the platform, but it's an exciting journey. And uh, because, you know, this, this uh, generative AI sort of, you know, space is evolving very quickly. Uh, but um, some aspect of it that's inference stations sort of, you know, stage, especially like the video creation aspect, we've got a lot of software out there like Romway, Luma, uh, Sora and others. But if you try it, like if you look at it closely, if you want to do something very specific you know, or something that the result is not good. But as the sort of, you know, the training evolves and, you know, these um, models actually improves, then the things improves as well. So we're going to have that generative sort of um, AI model sort of, you know, uh, for us also like integrated uh, in the future. So that's very exciting for us to have our own foundation model so that we can create not only by the influencer, but we also like can generate, you know, uh, videos uh, by our own sort of model. So that's kind of, you know, where we are heading. And the other thing which we are excited about, I don't know if you saw the Meta Connect uh, by presentation recently by Mark. Um, he actually showed some of these, um, you know, video dubbing and translation sort of, you know, thing which you can impaint the lip of the person. So if you have one person speaking one language and they can sort of, you know, not only translate and speak that language, but also they do impainting of the lips. So it actually looks very realistic. So these are some of the technology we've been also working for past few years. And um, these, these are sort of, you know, it's, something that we can actually augment the influencer to bridge across the country, not only like in one language, but multiple languages as well. That's uh, that's very interesting. And, and you guys, uh, who, who in your team is like focused on like staying ahead of these trends? Are you guys all doing it? Or, uh, is it your specifically like taking care of this or? Yeah, so we got, uh, we've been fortunate, I guess as a tech co-founder, Tech co-founder in AI. So my co-founder is, you know, I found him in University of Tokyo while I was teaching. He was doing his PhD. So I think having that sort of PhD pedigree, you know, give us an unfair advantage, you know, to look at at uh, the problem in a diff different lens, because you know some of the limitation and capabilities of AI. And uh, I guess, you know, that's sort of, you know, top-down approach. And also we can attract better talent. So we've got like number of researchers within our team and you know the data scientists that we attracted and naturally if you're a data scientist you've been the data scientist yourself you can actually attract a better data scientist uh, rather than if you're coming from the business you know then you can't have that sort of you know capability right so that's kind of you know that's our unfair advantage and we've been sort of you know doing the top-down approach and also like we got a lot of uh, research and knowledge sort of channel, which we are sharing the latest sort of, you know, trends and latest sort of technology. As, as I said, like, you know, this space is evolving very quickly. If you, if you just look at the number of papers coming out, like 8,000 papers a week or something like that, it's so crazy. Keeping up with that is like, you know, Im impossible, nearly <laughs> impossible. Yeah, I can, I can imagine that, uh, there's uh, AIs writing the, those papers and then there's another AIs studying the papers <laughs> so uh, okay uh, I think I think we pretty much went through all the parts of the conversation here uh, is there any like any announcements you would like to give to the community at this point yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, uh, so stay tuned once we sort of, you know, finish our fundraising and then uh, we would sort of launch the platform uh, to the wider audience. So if you are like, you know, launching your own coins, you're launching your own product, whatever that is, we are happy to sort of, you know, support you on that. And uh, I guess uh, as part of the Concordium sort of community, we want to give back, you know, some of that. So reach out to us, you know, saying, you know, you're from Concordium. So we will cut you a special deal, I guess, you know, when the time comes. Amazing. And uh, uh, maybe like you can you can also share the socials or how, how people can find you specifically. Yeah, you can reach out to me via X, I guess. Uh, so uh, you just my name, uh, my first name and second name. That's my handle. And you can reach out to me, sort of, you know, send or send me email or LinkedIn. Please connect on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. 
and um, also you can email me uh, salman at orpiva.ai if there is anything i'm happy to sort of you know touch base and have a cup of coffee or virtual coffee wherever you are in the world we are based in london uk uh, so I'm happy to hear a lot of you know insight and you know if you have something to share i'm very reachable actually Amazing, amazing. So on that note, I think we can start wrapping up. So thank you again, uh, Salman, for your time. And uh, okay. uh, let's continue exploring new innovations together, build bridges between AI and blockchain and social commerce. <laughs> so uh, I hope everyone had a great AMA session but wherever you are. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you again next uh week actually on 8th of uh, October we have the Verita Trust AMA so hope to see all of you guys there and thanks for having me that, I appreciate it take thank care thank you so much yes take care. Okay, bye bye